Our Father, we thank you for this session again of Bible teaching. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for all that we have received in all the other studies we have had. We are praying, O oh Lord, at this time again, you open our hearts to your word and open your word to our hearts in Jesus' name. We are asking, O oh Lord, that this important thing that you spoke about from the Old Testament to the New Testament, and you've been speaking to us about since the beginning of this ministry. And during this week, you've been speaking to us. We're praying, O oh Lord, our hearts will be receptive to your word in Jesus' name. Bless your people today, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Already we have covered some ground. As we have looked at the subject of holiness and sanctification. We have looked at sanctification and holiness through Christ. That Christ is the sanctifier. Jesus only. Jesus ever. Jesus all in all was seen. He is first of all our savior. And then our sanctifier. He is our healer. He is the baptizer in the Holy Ghost. And he is the coming king. So, we have seen Jesus Christ as a sanctifier. Holiness and sanctification through Christ. Then we have seen that this holiness and sanctification is something that you cannot do without. I cannot do without. Because the condition for acceptable enduring service the condition for all to enter into that eternal sanctuary and the condition to even abide in fellowship with the lord today that condition is holiness and sanctification then we have also seen holiness and sanctification in bible characters and as you go through the bible time will fail you to do that in one single session because as you open the new testament pages and you begin to see that holiness is a very centrality holiness is a very pivot holiness is a very hinge on which everything depends but you are not even just uh, to look at the New Testament. You go back to the Old Testament. And even though the uh, world of that time was so corrupt. And there was a wickedness and the corruption in the heart of all men. Yet, would well, you realize that uh, God found a man like Enoch. And God found a man interested in holiness. Interested in purity of heart. And the heart was pure. And the life was holy. And this man walked with God in the highway of holiness. Back then, in the Old Testament, and the Lord took him away. Because the earth was not fit for him to abide in. And then as you move on, we learn about Joseph. And as you move on, you will learn about Samuel. And as you move on, you learn about Daniel. As you move on, you learn about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Jeremiah is there too. A host of them. And Isaiah is there. When the fire came from very the very altar of the Lord and touched him, and the Lord said, Through that angel, your sin is purged, your iniquity is taken away. As you open the New Testament, you just come across Zechariah and Elizabeth and then the disciples of the Lord John the beloved and many others and Paul the apostle how holily unblameably justly righteously we behaved ourselves among you that believe you are witnesses and God is a witness also now having gone through all that you want to bring it now back to yourself contemporary Christians the Christians of today, the Christians of this generation, that we ought to understand that word Christian is associated with Christ. You know, the majority of contemporary Christians, Christians of today, they do not know the origin of that word Christian. Many do not think of its link 
of its association with Christ. And that Christians are actually called to be conformed to Christ. Many people also do not understand the word church. And when you talk of church, you talk of Christian. When you talk of the assembly of Christians, you talk about the church. And there is so much misunderstanding about the word Christian and about the word church. That word church, for many, many people that carry the Bible, for many, many people that name the name of Christ, for many, many people that belong to one denomination or the other, that word church has lost its meaning and significance to most people. In almost all assemblies and gatherings and congregations, the church is a place you go to socialize. It's a place you go to be entertained. It's a place you go to relax. It's a place you go for some other people, charismatics and Pentecostals, to be blessed and to be healed. A place you go to solve problems of all kinds. The point is this. The average fellow that goes by the name Christian, the average fellow, that professes to belong to a particular gathering fellowship or assembly called church does not have the faintest idea of what the Bible teaches concerning who a Christian is, concerning what the church is. Very, very few know that the church is the assembly of those who are saved from sin. The assembly of those who are called out to be separate from the world. The congregation of those who are called and given grace to live in righteousness and holiness to the glory of God. But you know, the early believers, they didn't have that kind of ignorance that many people have today. In Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11. Acts of the Apostles, chapter 11, verse 26. And when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass... That a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And there you have the mention of the word church. And there you have gathering together. There you have the concept of congregation. There you have the concept of an assembly. And there you have uh, the, the primary thing, the pivotal thing, the essential thing, the non-negotiable you must find in a church. They came together and taught much people. Do you know? That there are people that feel if they go to an assembly of worshippers, if there is no dancing, and moving the hand, and moving the leg, and moving the body, they say, what kind of church is this? This is no church. My friend, dancing was not part of the item in the program of worship in the Bible. Other people... If they don't find this or that, they will feel that, what kind of church is this? This is not complete. In the Antioch church, where they first called the worshippers, Christians, the very center of what we find in that assembly, is the teaching of the word of God. And thank God. The people that did the teaching. They were not just ordinary people. If you look at the previous verses. You'll see Barnabas there. 
And you'll see Saul there, Paul. Those two people, they gathered with the church. And for one whole year, they gathered together, teaching the people. And then, they became disciples. Who are the disciples? Jesus. Looked at all the people that followed him. And he said, Except you deny yourself, bear your cross, and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. Then he also said, Whosoever will not forsake everything and follow after me, he cannot be my disciple. These people, when they were taught, they repented. They became born again. And as they were born again, they were told, they were taught the principle of righteous living. And as they followed those principles of righteous living and the presence of Christ had a mark visible in their lives, in their conduct, in their character, that their neighbors took note of them. That these disciples were called Christians. That's, that's what Christianity is. Those are the people that are called Christians. And so, as you see the appearance of that word, you understand that when we talk about contemporary Christians, if they are going to be like Bible Christians, holiness, and sanctification will be the very center of their life and lifestyle. Then in Acts chapter 26, Acts chapter 26, verse 28 and verse 29, then Agrippa said unto Paul, almost, Thou persuadest me to be a Christian. Here, in what um, Agrippa said, we understand that you do not just get born somewhere, then get educated, get refined, and because of that kind of civilization you have, education you have, the position you have, the moral thing you have to be an emperor or to be a king or to be a leader, that because of that you are a Christian already. Almost thou persuadest me. It takes an evangelist coming with the evangel. Coming with the gospel. And then he comes to a group of people and persuasive preaching. Knowing the terror of God. We persuade men. It's when these evangelists come. They come with the evangel. They come with the gospel. And by the persuasive pretense presentation of the watch of the Lord. Talking about the Savior unto the sinners. They are persuaded to come to the Lord. And when they totally yield to the Lord, that's how they become Christians. And as we are here gathered, as an assembly of preachers and ministers of the gospel, would you understand that we have been given the evangel, we have been given the gospel to go into all the world. And with persuasive, pungent, penetrating preaching, you talk to the hearts of men until they are persuaded that they are in the wrong. They are persuaded they cannot save themselves. They are persuaded that there is salvation only in Christ. They are persuaded that except ye repent, ye shall likewise perish. They are persuaded that Christ is the only way of salvation. Look unto me, all ye the ends of the earth, and be ye saved. And they actually come to the Lord. And they became and they become born again, and their lives are transformed. Agrippa said, "I'm not there yet. I'm listening to you, Paul. I'm not there yet. 
I'm considering some notions in my mind, in my heart. I'm not there yet. Almost. That persuades me to be a Christian. Now understand, who is a Christian? In verse 28, verse 29, and Paul said, I would to God that not only thou, but also all that hear me this day were both almost and all together such as I am except these bonds that's Christianity Paul the apostle in that verse he tells us who a Christian is he said Agrippa you know what this is my desire this is my goal this is my wish this is what I will even if I were to be cut off from Christ that Israel might be saved this is what I want I would to God that not only you but all that hear me will be will be almost and altogether such as I am as a Christian such as I am what does that mean I hated Christ before I love him now I persecuted the church before now I preach to the church I was running away from the Lord before. I'm running towards the Lord now that I may know Him and the power of His resurrection. I, and I did everything I could to hinder other people to know the Lord. Now it's the opposite. I help all I can to know the Lord. There is a change in my life, He said. And if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, old habits are passed away, old ideas and notions and philosophies are passed away, and behold, all is become new. I would agree, that not only you, but all that hear me this day will not just be almost a Christian, but almost and altogether such as I am, as I have believed that they believe. As I'm following Christ, that they follow Christ. As I'm consecrated, like that they are consecrated. As I'm willing to do the will of God, every jot of it. As I'm willing to do the will of God with all my heart, with all my soul, leaving nothing behind. I would that everybody will be almost and altogether such as I am. How many people today? who go to church who carry the bible understand that when we talk about who christians are that this is a plain language of the bible telling us who christians are and you tell me brothers and sisters if all of us here if they send a gripper there that is a government functionary that has political office and then the rest of us ordinary people if we were to be almost and all together like Paul will be holy if we were to be almost and all together like Paul will be sanctified that's Christianity once holiness is not there sanctification is not there can we be talking of Christians who are, who are made so that they can be conformed to Christ? First Peter chapter 4. In First Peter chapter 4, here the word of God is still giving us the concept of who Christians are. And it's still giving us the understanding that Christians of today, contemporary Christians now, and we who are ministers helping other people, leading other people to know the Lord, to come to the Lord, and to stay in Christ. Here is what we need to know about who Christians are in First Peter chapter 4. First Peter chapter 4, from verse 14. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, Happy are ye, for the spirit of glory 
and of God rests upon you. On their part, he is evil spoken of, but on your part, he is glorified. Oh, this Christianity. He said, you, you people here, reading this epistle, and you are partakers of a like precious faith, if you are persecuted, reproached, insulted, abused, misused, denied, tortured, if ye be reproached for the name of Christ, not for stealing, not for gossip, not for getting involved with another man's wife. If ye be reproached only for the name of Christ, not because you're a busybody in other men's matters, not because you get out of your way to do something that is immoral. If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye, for the spirit of glory and the spirit of God rest upon you. On their part, it's not distinguishing. It's not contrasting. It's not making a difference between the Christian and the world. On their part, those people of the world, he is evil spoken of. But on your part, he is glorified. That's Christianity. And tell me, if everything we do, everything we say, everywhere we go, and the way we dress, and the way we have comport ourselves in our families, and the way we walk in our offices, if everything is to the glory of Christ, that's holiness already. That the places you go, only to the glory of Christ. The way you dress, only to the glory of Christ. The discussions you have, only to the glory of Christ. The things you eat, only to the glory of Christ. And the functions you go, only to the glory of Christ. And the friends you have, only to the glory of Christ. And the things you sell, only to the glory of Christ. Show me the Christian that is selling what the sinners are using to commit immorality so that they will not catch AIDS and you are the one that will store all those things and if they want to commit sin and they do not want uh, to catch AIDS then the thing they will use and put on you are the one that will sell that how does that glorify God the work you do the things you sell the friends you have and the functions you attend a second woman has delivered and you must be in the naming ceremony how does that glorify christ and the places you travel to to be here to be there to be there and the things you watch television if you see down there and you're looking at all those pollutions inflaming your flesh and decreasing the thirst for the things of God tell me how does that glorify God we're talking about Christians the people that whatever they see whatever they hear wherever they go whatever they read the books you read the magazines you read the things you look at in the newspapers everything when everything that you do privately and publicly everything is to the glory of god this holiness is another definition of holiness in verse 15 but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evil doer or as a busy body in other men's matters look at this yet if any man suffer as a christian praise the lord i said praise the lord who will help me who will help the church to, to take this name christian 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 this name that they are put in the gutter 
Did his name that they are thrown into the hotels and the motels with the prostitutes who will help the kingdom of God and take this name that men and women, boys and girls, they have thrown this name into the gutter and uh, uh, they make the floods, the erosion of the corruption of the world to be sweeping the name away. Who will take up this name, lift it high, cleanse it, purge it, purify it, and make it the kind of thing it ought to be, the word Christian. When you come to the New Testament, that's why I'm reading it to you. When you find out what Christian, 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 it's a glorious name. And, and God has called you here. God has called you here. Men and women, ministers of the gospel, preachers of the everlasting, eternal, infallible word of God that will bring this name Christian, bring it back, lift it up where it ought to be. If any of you suffer as a Christian, as we look at, the, at our congregation today, and we look at ourselves as ministers today, I heard of one of our preachers not out there in here although not here now pastor preacher he took the daughter of a member this daughter wanted to go and get form for higher institution and uh, the man said, Pastor said, I'm going to that place too. Oh, and the father said, Our pastor is going there. Can you can you go? Can you go with with uh, him? Oh, jolly ride, wonderful opportunity to go with our pastor, travel with our pastor. Bye bye. We don't even need to pray for the girl. Protection is there. She is going with the pastor. When they got where they were going. In the evening, preacher left where he was and he came to where that daughter is and the daughter was more righteous than preacher. And the daughter said, don't do this preacher. Don't do this pastor. You are the one teaching us. And preacher forced the girl into immorality. When they got back home, the man did not talk. Preacher, he did not tell his state overseer. He was just going about free preaching. It was the daughter that is more righteous than the preacher that told daddy and said, Daddy, the pastor you sent me with, do you know what pastor did? I never knew man in my life. That man has defiled me. Member of the church came to the pastor and said, Pastor, you did this to me. You defiled my daughter. So, you can do this. You are the one preaching sanctification and holiness. So, you did this, Pastor. Pastor cannot talk. Let none of you here suffer as an evil doer. No. Let it not even be once named among us. Hey, this is what we are talking about. The word Christian, there must be holiness and sanctification in the midst of people who are called Christian. Then he said, let him not be ashamed if he suffers as a Christian. But let him glorify God on this behalf. For the time is come that the judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end of them be? That obey not the gospel of God. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Already you've seen the word Christian and you've seen the word church. And it's very, very important we understand that once you name the name of Christ, holiness, 
Sanctification must be your watch, watch. Must be your lifestyle. Must be the all in all in you. Point number one. The call to holiness and sanctification. The call to holiness and sanctification. In First Thessalonians chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4. Verse 7. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. If there's any doubt in your heart, that should clear your doubt. God has not called us unto uncleanness, but he has called us unto holiness. And then in verse 8, he therefore that despises, despises not man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Look up here, please. You know, sometimes uh, we preachers, we get discouraged. We, we look at the Bible. And from Monday through Saturday, you are thinking of that subject. You are praying about that subject. And you take your concordance and fish out all the relevant verses. And you take the Bible dictionary. And you look at the meanings of some words that you need to put in. And you take the book of biblical illustrations uh, to bring into your message. And you put everything in. And after collecting and gathering all the materials, then as the week is coming to an end, you assemble everything together and you put your introduction and you put point one, point two, point three, and the conclusion. And then you pray. And as you look at the message, you say, Praise the Lord, the Spirit of God just helped me here and assembled everything. This, everybody will accept this one. Then you come to church. And as you get to church, and I, 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 you love the people. I, and you say, this is what they need. And after preaching it to them, you're surprised that some people despise the whole thing, reject the whole thing. What's he talking about? My child is sick, he's talking about holiness. See, certificate is in my hand. I don't have a job. He's talking about sanctification. We don't have food to eat on earth. He's talking about going to heaven. What's he preaching? And then some of them, they show it to you. That they despise that word of sanctification and holiness. Then you get discouraged. It's no point again. Why am I preaching? And as you get discouraged, you think you are the only one that happened to it happened to Paul. That's why he wrote to them. And he said, The call we have is from God. And God has not called us unto uncleanness, unto immorality, unto the perversions and the pollutions of the world. God has not called us. Unto that dirty politics they use in the world, bring it to the church. God has not called us unto uncleanness, but He has called us unto holiness. And then He says, Those who despise, they are not despising Paul, they are not despising Peter. They are not despising Silas or Timothy. They are despising Almighty God Himself who has given us His Holy Spirit. The call is clear. He has called us that 
will be saints and saintly holy in romans chapter 1 romans chapter 1 verse 7 to all that be in rome beloved of god read the next four words out aloud let me hear you called to be sinners called to be compromisers uh, uh, see the word of god called to be saints saints the people that are holy and saintly that is a calling that the lord himself has given us we are called to holiness uh, can you think of that as strange is it an unexpected call is it not normal is it not something to be expected that a holy god will call his children to holiness is it not something we should expect that he that is of purer eyes than to behold iniquity will definitely desire and demand that all who come to him must be free from sin free from external sin free from inbred inward sin that's what we expect he who sent his only begotten son to save us from all our sins why not he will expect salvation he will call us to salvation for his name shall be called jesus so that he will save his people from their sins and of course if he sent his only begotten son to die for us because of the problem of the first adam because of the sin that came in we will expect that he'll be calling us to holiness to sanctification called us to be saints that's the call of the lord and then in first peter the call to holiness and sanctification first peter chapter one first peter chapter one verse 14 as obedient children please stop there for a moment as many as received him to them he gave power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name to be sons of God we will believe in him come ye out from among them and be separate says the Lord and I will receive you and will be a father unto you and ye shall be my sons and daughters says the lord well then we understand that when we respond to the message of the gospel we believe on the lord jesus christ then we become children of god and god has only one kind of children as obedient children finished I used to wonder and this one used to really get me and this one it used to really depress me and this one it used to just put dagger in my heart when I see people that they know the truth they know the world if you asked them what's expected by god from everyone that names the name of christ they know it hundred percent then when i see them disobeying that word of god they know it used to really get me depress me do anything it just just make me feel the world is almost coming to an end and then the lord help me don't worry about that the lord told me in the visible church 
is larger than the invisible church it's not everybody the lord was telling me that you see there that is going to obey if you're looking for hundred percent obedience to the word of god by everybody that comes to retreat that comes to sunday worship that comes to workers meeting that comes to congress if you are waiting for a hundred percent all of them to obey before you preach then close your bible and go home and go back uh, to your mathematics and go and be teaching what you want to teach it will never happen i said lord it cannot have he said it will never happen this church is too large for everybody to be children of god there are weeds and tires and there is a mixed multitude and so the lord said to me take your bible and go and preach whoever obeys whoever does not obey you are preaching not for them you are preaching as your faithfulness unto me and then i said thank you lord and anywhere i go now anytime i know that not everybody is going to obey the call unto holiness and sanctification it used to get at me if if i if i preach a message and uh, you know i talk on the holiness i dig deep into the word of god and then i look up high into the heavens and i describe the rapture and i describe heaven and i describe the qualification to get there and i almost will be seeing the saints of god marching in and i tell them and the people pray and pray 10 minutes after that when the service ends if i saw anyone that uh, you know acted like the old 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 fellow it used to get me it used to just you know just smash me that see all the heaven you spoke about all the holiness you spoke about look at this and then i used to be so dejected and so unhappy why is this then the lord helped me that jesus jesus he himself he spoke about heaven not everybody that heard him accepted to go in the way to heaven relax and preach whoever wants to get it will get it whoever does not want to get it leave them in my hands i said thank you lord thank you lord and since that time now i preach it to you you throw it back to me i say praise the lord that's what the lord was telling me the other day and then those who obey those who obey those are the children of god as obedient children there's no other kind of children of god in the kingdom of god only those who make up their minds they're going to obey the lord they're going to follow the lord they're going to keep themselves totally submissive subjected to the word of god every judge every teacher everything in the word of god is say lord i know why i came to christ i know why i came to this church i know why i bought the bible i know why i got all those cases i know why i got all that literature i know the tears i know the consecration i know the things i left behind i know the place i am going and because of that goal that i have because i'm expecting my lord there is nothing else for me to do except to get the grace of god in my life so that i will Will be one of the obedient children of the Lord those children of God are called to live in holiness in verse 14 as obedient children not fashioning yourselves according to your former lusts in your ignorance but as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation because it is written be ye holy for i am holy for any sincere person who knows the bible who loves the bible he knows the call is plain the call is clear he has called us to holiness and sanctification in uh, this uh, same first peter chapter 2 verse 9 chapter 2 verse 9 but ye a chosen generation a royal priesthood and 
holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the princes of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. It, it, it's a mouthful. As uh, another preacher will say, that verse is pregnant with meaning. Because it tells us what kind of people we are. Contemporary Christians, listen. The church of today, listen. A chosen generation. Chosen. The Lord himself chooses you and selects you and takes you and calls you out of the world. A royal priesthood. That is, he calls you to priesthood and into kingly authority, behavior, character, conduct. Royal, kingly. That you will not behave as a paupers and a peasants, but as a prince that he has called you to be. And the priest, if you have time, go to your concordance and check up the priests. What they will do, and what the ordinary Israelites were allowed to do, and the priests were not allowed to do. And then he says, an holy nation. That's a nation within the nation. A little circle inside a great circle that these are the people. He calls them a holy nation. Which means then, all you come into that assembly, into that fellowship, into that little circle, refer to you as a nation within a nation they shall all be holy a holy nation and then it says a peculiar people what does that mean peculiar the world will not understand you your unbelieving relatives will not understand you even religious people members of the church the same church the same church the same church members of the church hearing the same thing you are hearing seeing the same thing you are seeing but their eyes are closed that they will not see the reality and the truth the inner truth in the Christian faith they will call you peculiar they may use other words like fanatical and they may say pharisaic they may use any other word because your ways are different because you will not eat what they eat you will not dress the way they dress and all these things that we're hearing they come to your house and they do not see television box ah. you see you, you are a journalist you're working in the media or you are a doctor highly placed and you are working in a sensitive ministry and you don't you know that television is necessary for you to be able to know what is going on in society so that your work will not be endangered as a journalist as a media person how can you be without television so you take all these things they are saying in the church literally totally like that a peculiar media personnel i've ever seen a peculiar journalist i ever saw so you mean you are serious if you don't keep it in the sitting room, you cannot put it inside your, inside your room where no member of the church will see and then you'll still be watching the thing so that you can follow the train, so that you will know what is going on and the developments and the research and all the things coming on, you will know it will help your work. You say, no, I don't want to be a hypocrite. If I don't want to be in the church, I'll then decide I don't want to be in the church. I'll go to another place. But once I am here, it means I agree with the teaching of the word I'm receiving. Ah, <laughs> I didn't know that you, you got this thing, uh, you know, you got madness with this uh, religion. I didn't know that you are so peculiar like this. I don't think I can be familiar with you. Thank you very much. Jesus is the best friend we have. If you go, bye bye. Peculiar people. And that, that's the call the Lord has given us. And then it says that ye shall show forth 
the praises of him that has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light marvelous light marvelous light and that's the call he has given us in second timothy second timothy chapter 2 verse 19 nevertheless the foundation of god standeth sure having the seal the lord knoweth them that are his and let everyone 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 oh, why do you isolate yourself why do you separate yourself are we not hearing the same word is it not the same call god has given to everybody is it not a privilege for you how many people there are there in some religious places where there is no salvation they have not seen the light they're educated the university people who are in the Jehovah's Witnesses and the eyes have not been opened. The university people in the white garment churches and even though they are university people, lecturers, senior lecturers and professors, they walk barefooted and put the white garment on and drink the dirty water they give them to drink. Their professors, their eyes were not opened. And God favored you. More than those people. They are more educated than we are. And he brought you in because of his love for you. And then as he brings you in, you don't appreciate. This privilege the Lord has given you that the eyes of the other people are blinded. But he has opened your eyes. And when you come in, you should be eternally grateful. Now, what others who are better than us have not got, we have got. And then if you are grateful, everyone, everyone, everyone that names the name of Christ, depart from iniquity. Then it says in verse 21, let me read verse 20, but in a great house, there are not only vessels of gold and vessels of silver but also of wood and of earth and some to honor and some to dishonor i told you already uh, those are the things that the lord used to help me to get me out of being sad every day the lord has now revealed to me I knew it in the pages of the Bible before, but now I know it in reality. That in a great house, there are not only vessels of honor, they are vessels of dishonor. But you shouldn't be a vessel of dishonor. See, the knowledge the Lord has given you, the privilege the Lord has given you. See, in the desires in the heart the lord has given you you are better than that and you shall come up higher and you will come up higher 